Hey guys, welcome back to Fish It First, where you can trust the product reviews because we aren't sponsored by the manufacturers. Now, if you get fired up by those opening clips of giant pike that we've been catching over the past few weeks, you are going to love this video. A number of you have reached out to us on Instagram asking how we're catching them. What locations are we picking? What depths are we at? What baits are we using? Today, I am gonna break down our exact approach on how we go out and find, target, and catch these giant pikes so that you can take that knowledge and apply it to lakes around you and have success as well. The first step in this process is you have to be on a lake that has giant pike. That seems obvious, but if you're on a lake that's got hammer handles, it doesn't matter if you follow these steps, you're not gonna be catching giants. Do a little bit of research. If you find that guys are catching 35 inch plus pike on a particular lake, that's a good place to start. That's a good place to apply what we're gonna talk about today. The second thing that we start thinking about once we've got a lake picked out is pike biology. So we're thinking about food and we're thinking about reproduction. When it comes to food in relatively warmer water situations, spring, summer, fall, pike are essentially going to stay fairly still. These large pike are gonna stay fairly still, wait for bait fish to come by them and then quickly lash out, grab them, and then go back to being still again. They're not expending a lot of calories in order to get the calories that they're eating, right? That's sort of a recipe for becoming larger. Well, now if we carry that over into the winter time, when it's even colder water, lower metabolic activity, these pike are gonna, going to be expending even less calories in order to get their food. We're gonna talk about that a little bit more in a second. Moving on to the reproduction, um, aspect of it is at ice out these pike are going to be going into the, the spawning season so you really want to be looking at that time at creeks and rivers so what we're looking for when we think about food and when we think about reproduction is yes you can find pike on reefs out in the middle of lakes and sometimes some big pike but the the high numbers of really large pike we find congregated in shallow bays and the reason for that is because when you have the winter kill or you have dead bait or dead fish that moves with the currents up into the shallows it co it concentrates uh, all of those dead fish in that area and it makes it really easy for these large pike to just slowly roam right they're not running marathons to go chase after fish they're just slowly roaming through burning up barely any calories there's some dead fish i'm going to go ahead and eat that and maintain my weight so the shallow bays are a good are a good place to target because of that. If you can find a shallow bay that has a creek or a river in the back of it or a creek or a river adjacent to it, like within a mile of it, that is even better. Because now you have a shallow bay where that giant pike can roam and find its meals that's also in close proximity to a good spawning location come spawning season. So when we find a shallow bay that's got a creek or a river in the back of it or within a mile of it adjacent to it, that's the place that we're going to target. Now, once we found one of those shallow bays on a more specific level or a, or a closer look level, what are we actually looking for? What we're looking for is at the edges of the bays or in the middle of the bay, we're looking for a point. Once we find that point, we're looking for an inside turn, ideally with a fairly steep break adjacent to the inside turn. And we're going to set up right there, right at the bottom of that break, because what we've found is that these large pike will sort of follow that break line. And if that, if that inside turn leads up into the bay, back to where there's a creek or a river, even better. I mean, that's sort of a gold mine uh, spot right there in that situation. But those inside turns with those breaks, those pike are gonna follow right along that inside turn. That's a great place to set up. From there, once you've got your location picked out, the next question a lot of people are wondering is, what depth are we fishing at? Well, if you can find one of those inside turns with a sharp break and you can find a depth of five and a half to eight feet, that is ideal. Now, when we talk about this, we're not talking about going onto Navionics or whatever, some kind of mapping system and looking to see what the contour lines say. We're not talking about that. We're talking about taking your sonar unit and putting that transducer at the very bottom of the ice and seeing a reading of five and a half to eight feet down to the bottom. That's what you're looking for. One of the mistakes that we see too many guys make is they're getting out too deep. They're getting out there in 10, 11, 12 feet of water and they're not having as much success as those of us that are up shallower. So don't be afraid to get up more shallow. This time of year, we're, uh, right, we're right now in the middle of February, this time of year you wanna be around that five and a half to eight feet. As we start moving closer and closer and closer toward ice out, late ice season, then we can move up shallower and closer toward um, 
um, the front of those creeks and those rivers where they're going to be spawning. The next thing that we need to talk about is what rig we like to fish and far and above anything else we like to fish tip-ups. Now it doesn't matter what kind of tip-up it is but we typically use insulator pads. I'll put a link down in the description below for a video that we did on how to make your own insulator pads. Save yourself some money. We also modify our tip-ups um, with regards to these uh, line guides. These line guides can spin on you and result in your bait just falling to the bottom and not maintaining the depth that you set it at. So we actually solder all of our line guides right to the shaft itself. When it comes to the line, we like 30 pound vinyl coated line. It doesn't ice up as bad as some of the other lines out there. And then we actually will tie that on with a Jimmy Houston knot to a custom made about two foot to three foot 50 pound fluorocarbon leader. That's very important in our opinion. Our rig is a little bit less visible than what a lot of other people are using out there. I will put a link down in the product description to a video that we did on exactly how to make these custom uh, fluorocarbon leaders. The rig that we like to use is the, uh, the big tooth rig from Clam. And the one that we like is the 100 pound fluorocarbon rig with the number two hooks on the bottom there. And the color that we like is the perch pattern. That seems to do the best for us. In terms of the actual bait that we're using, we've sort of played around with everything. Um, smelt, we've actually watched through a spear hole. We've watched them grab and spit smelt on numerous occasions, so we tend to steer a little bit away from smelt. Not that it can't work, but we don't like it as much. Uh, live suckers. They can be very effective, of course, but they lead to more false flags. We don't like that. Uh, we get plenty of cardio outside of our fishing videos. And uh, the other thing with the suckers is we haven't had the same amount of success, probably because they're moving. They're more of an active target. So it's probably gonna take more for that pike to say, yeah, I'm actually gonna put the effort in to go ahead and try to eat this thing. Versus dead bait alewife. Alewife, far and above all the rest, seems to be the most effective bait for these giant pike. It's flashy, very, very flashy. It's an oily fish, puts off great scent. It's gonna make all of your clothes and, and uh, gloves smell absolutely horrible. It's awesome. And they're large, right? So we're using 10 inch alewife. And the nice thing about that is you're not gonna have the number of catches that you would with smaller baits like a smelt. The larger baits are going to sort of weed out some of those smaller bites. So you're not gonna be catching some of those smaller pike. pike in general, if they're looking for a good size meal, are going to be looking for something about the third the size of the actual pike. So the bigger bait that you can get, the better chance that you're gonna weed out those smaller pike and get the true giant that you're going after. Alewife, 10 inch, that's what you should be using. Now once you've got your alewife, how you're gonna rig it on your quick strike rig is important. There are videos out there where guys will tell you that you don't have to put a hook by the head. And that's fine, that might be their experience. That has not been our experience. When we have not put a hook by the back of the head, right above the gills, we've lost fish. So we always put one hook on one side of the fish, right, right behind the head, right uh, above the gills there, get above the gill plate. And then we take the other hook and we rig it right behind the dorsal fin, but we rig it on the opposite side of the fish. So on each side of that alewife, you've got two barbs sticking out. Another thing that we've noticed is that the majority of the giant pike that we're catching have been caught very close to the minor and major moon phases, okay? So that's something else that you wanna be paying attention to. There are plenty of apps out there where you can follow those minor and major moon phases. Um, iSonar is the one that we end up using, uh, which, is, which is great. And it doesn't mean that you shouldn't be fishing in other times, but if you're limited to the times that you can fish, um, it's fairly common knowledge that predator type fish, these giant pike, giant muskies, um, tend to be biting around those minor and major uh, lunar phases. So pay attention to that. Another thing in terms of weather or pressure changes and whatnot, it's like anything else, prefrontal conditions seem to be best, right? If you know that there's a front coming in right before that front rolls in, that seems to be when we have the best bite. You know, one mistake that some guys make that I want you to avoid is letting the pike take too much line. And what can happen is if you sit there and let it go and go and go and go, that pike might stop. And if it eventually stops, it might start moving that fish around in its mouth, get those hooks out of position. You want to be setting the hook on these when the pike is moving. Now, some guys will say don't set the hook. I tend to disagree with that. I think that you should be setting the hook when you're setting the hook. So you get, you run out to that flag that's up, pull your tip up, up grab onto that line, and just give it a firm pull straight up, and then start pulling that line. Do not 
try to be yanking it like you're like you're given the hardest pull ever to start a snowmobile that's been frozen for three days don't be doing that but also don't pussyfoot it don't give this little tiny thing give a nice firm quick pull upwards and that's going to be uh, your most successful hook set well guys i hope that information was helpful for you go out there catch some giant pike go down in the comment section below and let us know if you're able to go out there and catch a giant pike let us know what you caught uh, let us know where you caught it what lake you caught it on we'd love to hear back from you guys and if you're on instagram if you follow us on instagram at fish at first be sure to send us pictures it's always fun to see what you guys are catching out there uh, while you're down in the comments section be sure to hit the subscribe button and the little bell notification next to it is so important because then you get notified whenever we release a video so that you can stay up to date on all of our fishing tips and product reviews. And if you hit the little like button down there while you're at it, that would be awesome. I hope you guys are catching a lot of fish this week and until next time, tight lines. Mm -hmm.